Welcome back to another Holiday Ops Statistical Analysis. In this video, we're going to cover how much a Holiday Ops box is worth, what you can expect to find in one, the value of all of the box packages that are on offer this year. We're also going to compare that value to previous years. And then we'll cover some drop rates for the items that you can find inside boxes, including tanks, resources, skins. And then after that, I'll explain why this year's Holiday Ops boxes are, relatively speaking, not worth as much despite the surface value they're offering. So let's get to it. Before you can provide a value of what's in a box, first you have to convert all those items into a single currency. Here's my conversion values. Feel free to pause the video. This year's total value of all items comes to a whopping 1,003 gold per box average. However, if we distill all the items you get to just the actual gold and the gold value of each tank, as in we're ignoring pointless things like garage slots, then the more realistic gold per box value is about 797. Here are the stats that break down those averages. Feel free to pause the video or click the link in the description uh, to get a better look at this one. We're just gonna keep moving here. This is a quick slide of the average box contents. We'll go into more details later on on the actual drop rates. And then something that was new this year, uh, when we go and look at the packages. So this year they offered a 200 box package for the 40% discount. This gave you 50 of each box and it pumped up the gold per dollar value since this package offers the cheapest box price. Please be aware that when you look at the bundles that offer fewer than 50 boxes, those numbers are artificially inflated since a tier eight is only guaranteed to drop on the 50th box. So if you're thinking that you're going to get roughly these values on smaller packages, I would caution you and say it's unlikely. If you're planning to buy boxes, I would go for at least 50. Let's compare this year's numbers to the historical value. We see a slight increase, but it's mostly on par compared to the last two years. And remember when you look at this comparison to keep an eye on the sample size. A larger sample size is going to be more representative of what you're actually going to see. So keep in mind that your drop rates may vary. Wargaming lists the standard items dropping at roughly 85.94. We observed 84.4, the lower percent is obviously due to the guaranteed pity mechanic for a high tier vehicle after 50 boxes. Uh, what Wargaming doesn't publish is the drop rates of the individual items within the standard item drop category. So from this, you can gather that about a quarter of your boxes are likely to just be one day of premium time. Now let's look at the observed drop rates of low tier vehicles. It's roughly on par with Wargaming's published value. Um, keep in mind that for low tier and actually high tier vehicles, Drop rates uh, for these vehicles are gonna be slightly skewed to new releases. The system, once you've drawn a low tier vehicle, will automatically provide you with one of the vehicles you are missing before giving you duplicates. That is the same for high tier vehicles as well. Now, if we take a look at the high tier drop rates, we'll notice that, well, the drop rate at 3.6% is way higher than the published value of 2.4%. Well, that's because you have a floor at 2% you are guaranteed a high tier drop after 50 boxes. Because of that floor, it moves the average past where the peak of the bell curve would normally be. Next, we'll look at the bonus resources. When I asked Wargaming staff, they told me each bonus resource should have equal drop rates, which pretty much the data confirms with Meteoric Iron having weirdly lower than the rest, um, but that's probably just due to variance within the sample. When it comes to the 3D styles, you have a 5% chance to get one of these in each box. You'll pull, at least from my data, you'll pull all five at roughly 82. Now that's an average, which means for half the people, it took more than 82 boxes, and for the other half, it took less than 82 boxes. So keep that in mind if you're buying boxes just for these styles. And finally, we'll take a look at the luckiest boxes. I always do this for fun, so to be clear, I expect all of the boxes to be of equal value. I just think it's fun to publish the data. And uh, what we can observe here is that CC boxes have taken the crown of the lowest value with magic still 
being quite low. And weirdly enough, lunar boxes were like way higher than all the rest. I mean, it's not a lot higher, but noticeably higher. I don't know. I just always think that this is interesting. So anyway, let's go over why Holiday Ops this year to me isn't worth as much despite the fact that the boxes clearly still offer the most efficient way to spend money on the game. So let's talk about it. Before I get into it, I do want to make an observation uh, from last year to this year, and that would be the difficulty in obtaining the credit bonus, the 50% credit bonus. So last year, we were given uh, as CCs 200 boxes. They usually do that every year, not guaranteed in the future. Um, usually that would give us that 50% bonus right when the event started. However, last year we didn't even get that far, which meant that the 50% credit bonus per match was very hard to obtain unless you were spending a lot of money and it was nearly impossible to obtain if you were completely free to play. This year, I'm happy to report that you can definitely get that bonus quite easily. And for free to play players, it takes maybe a little more than a week. So keep that in mind. That's a good change. So thank you, Wargaming, for that. So then even with the 200 box bundle, why do I think that this year the value of the boxes is considerably diminished when compared to prior years? And the reason, weirdly enough, is because of the absence of the advent calendar. In previous years, Wargaming would produce an advent calendar. Every single day, there was a new premium vehicle in the in-game store that was being sold for gold. This meant you could obtain vehicles that you normally couldn't get in the in-game shop in the game for the gold that you just spent all these boxes to get. This year, the advent calendar is absent. They do have a weekly deal, but the weekly deal hardly makes up for the loss of the advent calendar. The calendar was a great gold sink, and don't think that when I use the term gold sink that that's a problem. Gold sink is good for the game. Same thing with credit sinks. The issue is, is that a good gold sink is one that provides a good value to the person who's spending the gold. And with the advent calendar, getting all of these premium tanks that were one-offs, it was a really good way to spend all that gold that you've accumulated and fill out your garage with all the premium tanks that you were wanting but just didn't want to buy when they were on sale. So without that, all of this gold is gonna be sitting in your account and it's basically unrealized potential. So after Holiday Ops is over, Wargaming is, is gonna have to correct the economy. There is a lot of credits and a lot of gold floating out there and without anything to spend it on, Next year's Holiday Ops is going to produce a lot less profit because players will still have too much gold and credits in their account. So they usually solve this problem with like Black Market or the Auction House or things like that, which in my opinion weren't that great because they were limited in quantity or they were limited in their availability. Like you had to log in at certain times of the day. Not great. So I'm hoping that Wargaming comes up with an idea that is as good a value as the advent calendar was in the past, and I would definitely urge them to bring the advent calendar back next year. I'm not gonna get into the rest of the criticisms. If you want to read them, you can go to the article in the description, but that's gonna be my holiday ops uh, statistical analysis for the year. Hopefully I will see you guys again soon, and uh, hey, enjoy the festivities. Take it easy.